Hi guys! Welcome to Fundamentals of User Experience Design, a TWITS Plus Premium course. I'm Sarah Khan, and today we're going to talk about the anatomy of user experience. So in our last lesson, What is User Experience?, we established why you want to make your websites usable. In this lesson, we're going to expand on that idea a bit and delve into the various pieces that work together to make up a good user experience. There's a lot of terminology that gets tossed around, sometimes as though the terms were interchangeable, but they aren't. There are several distinct pieces that go into the overall user experience, and it's important to separate and identify each part in your process. So here's what we're going to cover. A bit of theory. I know it's dry, but it's important, unfortunately. Um, information architecture, interaction design, visual design, and then we'll have an assignment. So, first a bit of theory. This particular lesson is going to be somewhat theoretical, I'm afraid but I hope to keep it from getting too dry. This might be a good time to get a cup of coffee or tea or other stimulant of your choice. If you drink tea, I won't hold it against you. User experience is a broad idea. In order to design a good user experience, you have to address several specific sub-areas, requirements by the, of the business, of marketing, of product, of general usability, what the users want and need, um, organization, content, visual appeal, business and marketing objectives, all of this stuff has to be covered. So that's why we have these specific areas that we address separately. So what is information architecture? Well, it refers to the overall organization of navigation and content on a website or software interface. Organizing static content pieces, actions, and any other content in a logical, non-overwhelming way is the end goal of information architecture. This is a classic diagram in the field of user experience, Peter Morville's The Circles of Information Architecture. This illustrates the need to balance business objectives, usability, and available content in a given design, which can be quite a challenge, as I'm sure you know. So here are some examples. These are all things that work together to make up a site's information architecture. The navigation, breadcrumbs, sidebar menus, footer menus, headers and sections and content blocks. These are all things that you'll see in a site that are what help you move through the content and find things. And here's another example. You can see in this wireframe for an application that I was working on how we worked with the different levels of navigation and content blocks to get a logical hierarchy organized. Okay, so into the real world. Let's give Yahoo some love. They used to be known for uh, famous for, in fact, a giant list of links on their front page. Now they've added a lot of hierarchy and organization, so they've made some serious changes, and kudos to them. So and let's go into, um, let's see, let's go into the local version. It's pizza in New York. I'm sure there's got to be some of that. <laughs> so here we can see um, we have our consistent top-level navigation, which is the search, that's their main navigation interface. And then on the side here we have these filters that we can add. We've got price, locale, atmosphere, category. In addition to that, we have across the top an, another level, so you could filter by uptown and downtown on the web. Or in images. Oh, I guess it changes from... well, that's really cool. So you can see you've got these two levels of navigation working to filter this content and provide structure to it in different ways according to the context. So that is information architecture. What is interaction design? Information architecture, interaction design, they sound very similar, they start with I. How are they different? Interaction design refers to the overall experience of moving through a series of actions on a website or in a software system. For example, completing a task that requires a user to input information and then post that information to a database. The process of getting that user to perform that task is interaction design. So here are some examples. If something is clickable, scrollable, typeable, or involves action words, that those are indicators of an interaction. For an example of interaction, let's go to Amtrak. Got to get some information from you before they can show you anything that's going to be useful to you. So they've chosen to ask for some inputs from you. 
I don't know what my train station is. Here we go. There's a bus stop. Oh, no soup for you. We can't go there. But that's an example of a choice in interaction design where they require information in order to filter the information in a useful way. Now here's another example of an interaction. Let's go back out into the internet. Okay, Groupon.com. They have the same problem to solve that Amtrak has. They have so much information that they could show you, but only some of it's going to be relevant to you. So here they bring a series of choices to you. Let's see what's going on in Tulsa. Why not? Come on, let's go. Okay, so now they know where I am and who I am, so they can kind of recommend things that they think would be relevant to me. And that's another example of an interaction. Okay, so separating visual design. Examples of visual design are pictures, colors, typography, the overall look and feel. And they're not necessarily connected to the interaction design and information architecture decisions that you'll make about an application or a website. You decide those things first, and then you add the visual on top of it to make them appealing. Okay, so let's have another example. So that process that it took us through, this is an interaction. It's giving me things to choose, it's asking me to make decisions and give information. But these pictures, this sunburst and the fonts and the logo and the uh, no doubt cooling drinks, it's a minty ice cube, it doesn't get cooler than that. These are all examples of adding visual elements to add additional fun and appeal to this process. This process would work, it would be a good interaction, even if it was just all black and white. But that visual trans transition, the pictures, all of that are examples of adding visual design elements on top of interaction. So it is time for an assignment. So let's go to msnbc.com. I picked that kind of at random because it's a site that has a lot of information to handle. Um, go ahead and visit this site and identify an element of information architecture. Hint, navigation menus, breadcrumbs, and page headings are all examples of that. Identify an element of interaction design. You know, if you'll remember, verbs, action words usually indicate an interaction and then pick an element of visual design. So, something pretty. Maybe this banner. So pick one thing and then see how you would do it differently and sketch it out. Whether it's reorganizing a navigation menu or reorganizing a sign-in form, adding some different graphics, different fonts. You could really be creative. Next time on Fundamentals of User Experience Design, we're going to cover Lesson 3, Getting Started. This is Sarah Khan, and from all of us here at Toots Plus, thanks for listening.